the upgraded version of the charge verter. If you don't know what this is, basically it's a 48 volt, you know, lithium battery charger for your solar system that can charge up to 5,000 watts and then hook it up to the system to make sure the thing works. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the specs and I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with this thing. And the reason I'm replacing my other charge verter. So if you're interested in being able to charge your system back when there's no solar or low solar back with your generator and you don't wanna have grid input going into your inverters, bam, I'm gonna tell you why this is gonna be a great option for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. All right, bam, just so y'all can see what the packaging is looking like. Might as well go ahead and turn it all the way on its side. Let's go ahead and start pulling some of this stuff out. All right, first thing we got is the battery cables. And we got a quick connect like we'd have on the Power Pro batteries. You no, know, just a smaller version, I like that. Got your manual, your bracket, mounting brackets and some hardware. Then on the bottom, got a, looks like you got communication cables and maybe a generator start stop cable. That's what that looks like to me. I guess this is the cable that is connected to the actual unit itself. So let's go ahead and break this thing out. Okay, so that cable's not actually connected yet. Looks like it's got another quick connect plug for the power, the input power that can connect to your generator. Oh, is it, this thing is packed good, that's for sure. This thing is in there. Rah. I'm about to pull the whole foam out. All right, let's pull the whole thing out, I guess. Probably not good having it standing straight up, but we'll go ahead and sit it down and get this box out of the way. Uh, all right, I mean, you can see how tightly this thing is packed in there so it doesn't get any damage. You know, let's get this foam out of the way. Bam. And I like that, how the cables are all quick connect. So man, man, that's a good looking unit. I like the black. It's gonna match my other units besides, you know, having the yellow. So it's gonna match and look good next to that. As you see, you got the gray and black, so it's gonna match everything. Got a little spec sheet right here on the side. Looking like we got the quick connect and some, some air access so the system can breathe and cool off. And then the battery, then the battery quick connects. All right, hopefully you can see that. Let's go ahead and go over the specs. I'm just gonna read them right off of the side here. The AC input voltage is gonna be 90 to 240 volts. So depending on what kind of plug you have on it, you know, you can run it off of 240 or 120. And it's 50 or 60 hertz. Of course, this could be depending on where you live at. Your 240 volt AC input max is 26 amps or 5,120 watts. And then if you're on 120 volts input, your max current is gonna be 28 amps and your max output power is gonna be 3,050 watts. So that's not bad there. You can get 5,120 watts out or to 3,050 watts, depending on what you're running. Your nominal voltage, of course, for this charge is gonna be 48 volts DC. Your bulk charging voltage is gonna be 54 volts DC. Your minimum charging voltage is gonna be 43. And your max charging voltage is gonna be 57. And your max charging current is gonna be 100 amps. And the operating temperature for this unit is gonna be 14 uh, degrees Fahrenheit to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And it says it's IP21 rated. I'm not exactly sure what that rating is, but it's probably just dust is my guess. And as you can see, right over here on the battery side, we got a few uh, uh, of the communication ports. So on the bottom is gonna be your dry contact for your generator start, and then your RS-45 for your battery communication. So the difference between this unit and the other unit is the communication, and you being able to set this thing to start at a certain state of charge and charge back up your batteries automatically without you having to do anything. And you'll be able to use you know, the state of charge uh, a minimum to start it, and the higher one to stop it, but you can also use voltage. I guess if you don't want to do battery communication, you can set the voltage, a start point where this thing will start charging and a stop point where it will stop. And also, you know, combined in that, if you have it hooked up to a generator, you know, for the auto start stop, it'll start it when it needs to, and then when it's done charging, it'll stop it. So let's say you hook this thing up to grid power or a generator, however you want to do it, it's probably made for a generator, but I always use my charge verter to charge from the grid. If my stuff gets really low and it's been cloudy for a couple of days, you know, I'll just plug it up to the grid to charge the batteries back some. And the plug that comes on this look like the NEMA 1430 plug, so 240 volts. So those are some great features that I wished were on the first one, and I'm glad that they upgraded and added stuff that people asked about. You know, that's the thing about EG4 and Signature Solar. They're out there trying to make this stuff better for everybody. You know, they're making great inverters 
converters, the 6,000 XPs that I got, you know, the 18K PV. I mean, those things are awesome. I got three of these things run my house pretty much all the time unless there's not been sun for days and days and days, you know, but I can leave my house, you know, if there's any sun at all, pretty much off grid for probably like a week at a time without having to have any kind of inputs from the grid as long as there's some sun. You know, it's just usually you're gonna have some cloudy days here and there or rainstorm, you know, just depending on where you live, I guess. But, you know, the longest I've probably ran off grid is maybe like a week and have to go back on the grid since I do have it at my house, I will use it. But if I don't need it, I just turn it off and don't use it. And if you're completely off grid and you don't have grid access, you can use a generator to charge your batteries back you know, the same way you can use this thing from the grid. So it's looking like a charger, just plug straight up to your batteries, it's not going to the inverter, and it's just gonna communicate with your battery and figure out what the state of charge is, and then start and stop based on your settings. So that's gonna be pretty simple. So I guess what I'll go ahead and do is turn the system off, get this thing swapped out, you know, install it on the wall over here to basically mount this little bracket here. You know, we've got a couple of holes that's gonna go to the charge inverter, and the ones on the outside, on the top and the bottom, whatever you want to call it, that's going to go into the wall. As you may be able to see right there, there's an arrow right on the, the, the front side. So this is the front of the, the charge verter, and there's an arrow right on the front that you have to get the cable lined up with. So let's go ahead and show you that. So as you see right there, you got some arrows right there. You want to get that lined up with this side. Get that lined up and just push it on. And you might not be able to see it because I had to push it with both hands. But just push it on and then, you know, there's, if you want to lock it, it's just to the right, unlock to the left, you just pull it right back off. So we'll leave it locked in place. As you can see, quick connects on, got little push buttons you can push to get them right back off. And now we're going to go ahead and hook them up to my Lynx uh, Power In bus bar. I'm going to have to turn everything off first. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, got the battery communication cable. See, it's got the yellow ends. Let's go ahead and get that connected. I already hooked up the battery cables, and of course, I forgot to turn the camera on. I'll show you that in a minute. I just got it hooked basically to a bus bar. Red to positive, black to negative. Plug on the top of the charge verter GC is your battery communication. And it says in the manual that your battery that you're communicating with your GC cannot be hooked up communicating to your inverters. So of course I had several batteries that's not communicating with inverters because I never had enough cables to hook them all up because I got my batteries kind of spread out. I got 12 of them communicating with my inverters and another another five on the ground that's not communicating. So I'm just gonna hook this up to one of the LifePower batteries and see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll hook it up to the LL battery. I'm gonna just try both of them just to see which one will work. And we'll just turn it on. The first time powering the thing up, let's get the camera in here. As you see, we got our connector. It's saying SOC is lost. So I'll probably have to sit this all down or either the Life Power 4 doesn't communicate. Let's try that. Let's try all the dip switches down. And I might, oh, look at that. SOC, 78%. So when I push those ID switches down, the SOC went to 78. Let's make sure it stays on there. Let's look at one of my LL batteries. You know, 77%, so basically 78, so fairly close. So that communication is gonna be about right. Screen lights up, the screen is very clear on the charge verter. Currently no current. Let's go ahead and set this thing up. Uh, of course, I don't have it plugged up to start charging immediately, but let's go ahead and mess with the settings. Let's go enter, let's see what happens here. We got voltage, SOC. Start 80, press the down button and it moves over. All right, up will change the, your number. So we'll, we'll start it at, at, at 70. Since we already got it at 77, we want the thing to start. So as you see, I got it on 70, let's enter. And then go over and current. So let's take it to a 90. We'll go over to the stop. And we're just gonna make this 80. Since the battery is already at 77 and enter. Let's make sure you can see that because I was trying to hold it and do it at the same time. So you see the SOC start 70%, SOC stop 80. Now we're going to go ahead and press the escape button to go back to the home screen. And then I'm going to go and plug it up to make sure the thing starts charging. Definitely sounds like the charge verter is on. Let's see what we're pulling. All right, see the current slowly going up. Amps up to 14. Remember I had it set at 90. So it's slowly going up. 
Definitely a lot slower than other charge verter, which I like. It is more of a soft start. And now it's starting to crank up the amps, getting a little more sound out of the charge verter. Let's go ahead and get you in there so you can see good. Up to 55 amps. It's just working like it's supposed to. I mean, that is what you like. And it immediately started working, even with the Life Power 4 battery. And I'm pretty sure I haven't even updated this one. And it just started working with the SOC. I mean, that's how it should be. So, man, EG4, great job. You know, because who likes messing with firmware? Not me. And it seems like if somebody's going to have a problem, it's always me. I always have weird problems that other people don't have. So it's definitely a good thing. Up to about 77 amps. So it's cranking it out. No problem so far. It's definitely getting a little noisy, as you might be able to hear on my mic. So you got the little charge indicator flashing, the little light, the LED on the, the right, the one on the left, that's the power LED. And if you want the screen to light up, of course, you're gonna hit the skate button, probably enter too. And this is pretty good. This, this screen is not flashing like a lot of them on the camera, so at least you can see it good. And that's what we got to set at 90 amps. It's kind of hanging out right there, leveling out at that 90 amps. Let's go ahead and crank it all the way up to 100. And it started over. That's a little weird. So it didn't go from 90 straight to 100. When I set it to 100, it's going to go all the way back up with that ramp, which I guess, hey, it's fine, but. You would think since it's already ramped up, that's probably an update they can do. So you would think if you have it set at 90 amps and then you set it to 100, it'll go straight from 90 to 100. But I guess this thing just restarts back at zero. So the unit got a lot quieter and it's just ramping up again. But I'm sure it's gonna be like last time. It ain't gonna take long, it's going right up. And we'll get like a little better shot of the BMS communication cable, which I just got sitting here right now. So it's just a port right on the top. But you might be able to see there's a port on the bottom. And the one that's plugged into is the 485 on the top. And a BMS communication for the batteries is hooked to this Life Power 4. So my batteries are doing pretty good on the charge. After I get all this tested out, I'm gonna turn it off, of course. Turn my inverters back on, turn my whole house back on, because right now I got it running on the grid so I can do this test. So I, can, so I can actually do what I like to do, and that's run my house with my batteries that were charged from my solar, not the grid. You might be able to hear that in the background, but why that's ramping up, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I'm gonna do with this charge verter. It's not gonna be just charging it from generators or something like that during emergencies, even though you definitely can do that. What I'm gonna do is move all my loads in my main panel of my house to another panel. That way I can have this charge verter hooked to the grid power all the time. And if my batteries get too low, I'm just gonna have the thing charge them back up like five or 10% to help me make it through a night that maybe I don't have enough battery power. That way I never have to turn my house on the grid. The only thing I might have to do is I'll leave a, my EV charger on the grid and then this charge verter on the grid. And then if I ever need any power, I can charge my car and save my batteries to run my house at night. And then the charge verter, you can just set the state of charge and it'll automatically turn on. Let's say if I, it gets down to 25% and I want to take it to 30, you know, I'll just charge it up that 5% and maybe that'll help me to get through the rest of the night. And if it's some night that's going to be uh, really cold or use a lot of power, maybe I can set it up to go up 10 or 15% when it charges. But it sounds completely ramped up now. Let's see what we got coming in and if it's at 100 amps. And the current's at 94.9 amps. And that may have something to do with the battery communication or something like that. Hard to be putting out to 5,000 watts and it might just be regulating itself down. But I would've thought it would've went all the way up to the 100. But hey, 95 is still pretty good. So it's not going up to 100 amps, but it is 95. Maybe if the SOC was lower, we have to do some testing when the SOC is lower, it probably will go up to 100 amps. Maybe it's just not doing it because it's at 79%. I would think that would be a little higher, like in the 90s before it started slowing down, but you just never know since it's only hooked up to one battery, the communication wise, it doesn't know that there's all these other batteries hooked up. So maybe it's not trying to take it to its limit of 100 amps and worried about uh, turning the thing off, shutting down the BMS. All right, so what do you think about the little charge verter so far? As you can see it back there in the background. I gotta do some wire management and clean all this stuff up. But hey, 
If you want one of these, of course, I'm gonna have this thing linked down below. Definitely has some great features since you can set the SOC, use a generator. I didn't try those features yet because I don't have a generator with an auto start, but I'm gonna have to get one one day so we can test that out. But hey, if you're interested, I'll leave this thing linked down below. And if you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and thanks for watching.